I am the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Australia. I am the most important document in this land. Without me, all other contracts and agreements are worthless bits of paper. Even your money and the deeds to your home are worthless without my protection. Yes, the very fabric of your free Australian society is vitally dependent upon me. Perhaps you've never heard of me, or if you have, the chances are you know little about me. Why? Because there are those living among you who are deadly afraid of me. They've kept me out of your schools and universities for decades, and they fully intend to have me quietly hidden away from you. Why? Because I am the rule of law, the moral law, and not the rule of men. Listen to my story. Although I was born in July 1900, my original ancestor was carved in stone on Mount Sinai three and a half thousand years ago. Those Ten Commandments have remained unchanged throughout the centuries, and not one word will ever be changed. Jesus brought those Ten Rules together perfectly in two simple commandments in the New Testament. If you love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself, then you break no laws. That is the true meaning of those words. You are not under the law unless you break the law. If you do not break the rules of the road, you're not subject to them. Break them, and you are subject to them, and will pay the legal penalty. Those Ten Commandments are not oppressive. They are the foundation for maximum freedom and rights for individuals in any nation at any time in history. Eight centuries ago, another great ancestor of mine was born, Magna Carta, one of the most magnificent documents ever written by man. The people of England, the barons and the church leaders, had had enough of King John behaving like a dictator, so they made him sign the Magna Carta in 1215. It guarantees so many freedoms, rights and responsibilities that you take for granted today, but you have been kept from knowing about. The Magna Carta is common law and is part of me today. It declares, No free man shall be taken, indeed imprisoned, either dispossessed or outlawed or exiled, or in any manner destroyed, except by means of the legal judgment of his own equals, indeed the law of the land. Common law. His own equals, plural, is a jury of twelve people. A single judge is not an equal, and can never be, because no individual is unbiased. After King John was put in his rightful place, the Habeas Corpus Act was established in 1640 and secured in 1679. It states clearly that no one can be jailed without a proper jury trial. A suspected criminal may be reasonably detained until a jury trial occurs, but a jail sentence cannot be legally ordered because on July 5, 1641, habeas corpus also abolished the Star Chamber, where a single judge made orders. It was also known as the Star Chamber of Satan and was despised by parliaments and the church. It was outlawed for 400 years because of its anti-Christian procedures, but in 1975, it was re-established in Australia disguised as the Family Court. More of that shortly. The Bill of Rights was written into law in 1688 with additional protections. It is part of me today. It is common law. In 1899, I was adopted by the Australian people in a referendum and I became your most important deed in 1900. I became well known in your homes and you knew that my rules apply to everyone, no exceptions. I was taught in your schools and universities up to 1975. I am drawn from the very best of the tried and tested wisdom of the centuries for the rule of law for any nation, not the rule of greedy men who have no allegiance to anyone but themselves. I am written in simple English in numbered sections dealing with various areas of your life and your culture. Read me. I am straightforward and easy to understand. You can download me from this CD into your own computer and print copies for your computerless friends to read and get to know. Since 1900, there have been amazing changes in technology, and whether you drive a horse and buggy or the latest supercar, human nature does not change. Those wise men who hammered out my words over the centuries knew this, and they allowed for it. Yes, I can be changed, but only by a majority of you, my people, in a majority of states, in a referendum. And this includes the so-called laws of local councils. They call them ordinances. 
Yet they continue to illegally create new laws and bylaws without your knowledge or consent. That includes any laws that tamper with your food, your water supply, or even daylight saving. In September 1988, they tried to sneak a new law through which would give local councils the power to make new laws as they pleased. This was rejected by you, my people, in that referendum. Any council laws that conflict with common law are illegal. No one, not even a policeman, may legally enter your property without your consent or a proper judiciary order. If anyone says they're authorised by a town council, that is a lie. No council, no government department, nor any private organisation can authorise one person to make a rule over another. Those counterfeit policemen and women have no legal authority over you, no matter who they say they work for. So if they do enter your property, threaten you in any way, or try to take anything which is legally yours, have a video camera ready and record it. They hate it. Remind them that an order by a single magistrate is not a judiciary order. It is illegal because it is a violation of common law in the Criminal Code Act 1995, Section 268.10. Any council laws that conflict with common law are illegal. Proper rules are not oppressive. They're there to protect freedoms. Before we play golf, we all agree to abide by the rules. The ball should be played where it lays. is to be obeyed by everyone. But that rule could be changed, providing we all agree, before we play. And so it is with me. There have been minor changes that have been approved by you, the majority of people in a majority of states. But they were minor issues that gave governments no increase in power. Since 1900, they attempted to get more power over you 46 times, but through national referendum, you rejected 40 of them. Did you know that in 1932, the Tasmanian government tried to abolish itself and hand over control to Canberra? The wise Governor-General said, You can't do that. You must ask the people first. You, my people, said no, and a new government was elected. Did you know that in 1975, your Prime Minister, Gough Whitlam, attempted to defraud Section 83 regarding the nation's money supply? The wise Governor-General said, You can't do that. You must ask the people first. You, my people, said no. The Prime Minister was sacked, and you, my people, endorsed the Governor-General's action. You elected a new government with a landslide majority. The wisdom and dignity is within the office of the Governor-General, who acts on behalf of your non-biased umpire, the Sovereign of the Commonwealth, who cannot be bribed. Now you know why wannabe Republicans seek to abolish our Queen. And don't be deceived by judges and solicitors who will try to tell you that I am not valid today. That is a deliberate lie, and the High Court says so. In 1996, the High Court of Australia, the highest court in the land, Section 71, in what is called the Cable Principle, declared that the Commonwealth remains one and indivisible, just as I do, with only one judicial power, not different rules in each state. Did you know that on September 5th, 2006, in that monumental case of Forge versus Australian Securities and Investments, all seven High Court judges stated unanimously that your Constitution reigns supreme, that's me, and that all other laws and rules are subject to me. So if any laws conflict with me, they are invalid and illegal. Section 109. When a law of a state is inconsistent with the law of the Commonwealth, the latter shall prevail, and the former shall to the extent of the inconsistency be invalid. So you see, my people, that I was hammered out over centuries by wise men who foresaw that evil individuals, organisations, Local councils, even governments, would try to get around me to fulfil their power lusts and to line their own pockets. So those wise men built safeguards into me, the most important being your absolute right to trial by a proper jury, not by a single judge. A jury is your right in any court, including the evil family court. No judge, no magistrate, nor any individual has any right to dissolve a marriage or make any orders without the free consent of both spouses, face to face. Sections 79 and 80 are very clear. They state in essence that In any court, the trial on indictment of any offence against any law of the Commonwealth 
shall be by jury. Marriage is a commonwealth issue, section 51, and the Bible laws, especially in Mark chapter 10, all of it, are the guidelines. In fact, if any section of me is to be interpreted, then the Bible laws prevail, as stated in my preamble. To ensure safety, we all drive on the left-hand side of the road. Likewise, in our society, we all abide by Christian principles. When you're asked to swear on the Bible, not on any other document, it means that you and the judge and everyone in the courtroom accepts that the Bible laws are supreme, even above me, because my rules are derived from the laws in the Bible. For example, there were twelve disciples, and twelve has been the number of jury persons selected by Christian societies to be, in effect, judges plural, with a small j. That is the word in my section 79, which has court in a lowercase c, and judges plural, with a lowercase j. This is most important. Small c court is simply a hearing, and no judgments nor orders can be made there without your consent. Small j judges plural is a jury. A judge is not a justice without a jury decision. If you face a judge who went to law school later than 1975, you may need to inform him that there have been no referendums to tamper with section 79 or 80 or 109. If he disregards your legal right to trial by jury or attempts to dismiss your case, you must challenge the jurisdiction of that court and demand a proper jury of 12. Any order by a single judge, magistrate, registrar or anyone without your consent is invalid and also carries severe penalties against them, as listed in the Crimes Act, Section 43, for obstructing the course of justice. Judges and solicitors are deadly afraid of juries and will stop at nothing to keep them out of the courts, even threats of ridiculous fees. And if that doesn't frighten you, they've used force and harassment, off the record of course. What used to be the police service has become the armed police force. However, you are bound to obey orders by a proper policeman, and if his actions are proven to be incorrect in a legal court, then the rule of law will prevail. There are many good police officers who have taken the oath of allegiance, it's at the end of the Constitution on this CD, and they do act morally and responsibly, but they fear the sack and their super if they don't conform and obey orders, legal or otherwise. Nevertheless, one of the results of the Nuremberg Trials is now adopted worldwide. It states that even if you're obeying orders to commit a crime, you are personally guilty of that crime. The judiciary will try to confuse you in legalese language. Some will rant and rave at you. Some may ignore you and even attempt to order you to leave the court. But take no notice. Stand up to them and know your constitutional rights. Remind them that the court does not belong to a single judge. It is your court, the people's court, and has been since 1215. When you go to court, do not go alone. Take a group of friends to witness the proceedings. It is a public court. They have every right to be there. Section 79, 80 and 109 are most important. Learn them off by heart. 2,000 years ago, the wisest teacher in history challenged the evil judges and lawyers face to face in Luke chapter 11, verses 46 and 52 in your New Testament. Look it up. But their descendants are with us today in every nation. They have not changed their nature nor their plans, only their appearance. Listen to me, my people. I am the rule of law. But those who Jesus rebuked on several occasions seek the rule of men. That means ultimately, Republican dictatorship. Now you say that USA is a republic. Yes it is. But what has prevented it becoming a dictatorship is, they have the second amendment in their constitution, the inalienable right to bear arms. No dictator can successfully take over a nation while the people are armed. Did you know that in Switzerland and some American counties, you can be fined if you do not have a gun and ammunition in good working order in your home? Switzerland has little crime and no home invasions. In Australia, there are people promoting the idea of Australia to become a republic, but few, if any, have a clue what kind of republic they want. But they do have one thing in common. Their number one objective is to eliminate me, your constitution. Why? Because that is exactly what has been done by every dictator in history. 
Step 1. Disarm the population. Step 2. Plunge the nation into impossible financial debt. Step 3. A republic. Step 4. A dictatorship, worse than any that has ever occurred in history. Why? Because of today's money power. Over history, money has been in many forms. Gold and silver, cattle, coconuts, and even rum in the early days here. Money is a far superior system to barter, and there's nothing wrong with lending to invest in a productive profit-sharing venture. But to charge interest on created money is the root cause of all economic problems. How ludicrous it would be if a railway organisation employed a printer to print their tickets, and the printer says, Because I created these tickets, I own them, and I will lend them to you at face value plus interest. You say, how ridiculous. But that is exactly the way it is today with the money system. Have you ever heard of a train not running because they didn't print enough tickets? Of course not. But that's just as stupid as saying you can't build roads or schools or whatever we need because we lack the money. We have the materials, the man and machine power and the skills to make it happen. So how can you say there's not enough money when in reality money is nothing more than a sophisticated ticket system? Today, the money or ticket system is 95% computer blips and only 5% notes and coins. It is created and controlled exclusively by the banks. It is the system which causes your problems, the mathematics. If the interest rate is 5% on a $100 loan of new money, then 100 plus nothing does not equal 105, which is the amount the banks demand you pay back. The extra 5 is not created, so the nation as a whole can never get out of debt to the banks. It must keep borrowing more to continue. Mayor Amschel Rothschild was from a family of goldsmith moneylenders and said, Give me control of a nation's money supply and I care not who makes its laws. So how did the Rothschilds and others become so wealthy? Around 1690, the English King William needed money for a war with France, so he borrowed £1.2 million, a staggering amount, from the goldsmith moneylenders. Their reward? He granted them a charter for the Bank of England in 1694, which made it legal for them to charge him 8% interest. This was the beginning of the modern privately owned banking system. It has taken them only a few hundred years to become the only source of money and your slave masters. Did you know that the Reserve Bank is not a government operation? It became independent in 1960. It creates money out of nothing. But that is not the problem as you'll see. The problem is the Reserve Bank is just like the printer for the railway tickets. It pretends it owns that new money and lends it to your government with interest on top and takes a mortgage over your taxes. Now you know where a large chunk of your taxes go. Ask yourself or anyone who should know, politician, financial advisor, bank manager, hairdresser or cab driver, they know everything, ask them. If every nation is in debt, who is the creditor? You'll be dismayed at the answers. Did you know that under my section 51, 4, 12 and 13, your Prime Minister and your Parliament have the duty and the legal power to solve the so-called money crisis in only a few weeks with no interest and no debt? Governments and governments alone, not the banks, have the legitimate power to issue the nation's money or credit to represent the real wealth of the nation. The Nullarbor Railway was built under the rules of Section 51. No interest, no debt. You may ask if it's as simple as that, why isn't it being done now by either side of politics? Why? Because many rich people and the judiciary benefit from the existing system. They don't want it changed. Did you know that cost orders in today's courts are the greatest fraud ever perpetrated upon you, my unsuspecting people? It's a huge extortion racket. In 1640, Habeas Corpus Act, which is also contained within me, ordains that Unless and until a jury trial is held and an event of a judicial nature occurs, no costs are payable by either side in proceedings, regardless of any direction from any parliament. In other words, only a jury can award costs, 
and any ruling made by a single judge without your consent or a jury is illegal and invalid, period. On August 20th, 2001, the penalty was fixed at 25 years jail for both the solicitor and the judge who commit the crime of costs orders. It comes under slavery in the Criminal Code Act, Section 268.10. Did you also know, my people, that variable interest loans are illegal? For a loan contract or any agreement under common law, there are eight essential elements. There must be an offer, acceptance, sufficient consideration, capacity to contract, intention to enter legal relations, legality of purpose, genuine consent, and certainty of terms. Variable in the Oxford English Dictionary means uncertain. The fraud committed by the banks is contract fraud under common law, the uncertain terms of variable interest. Did you know, my people, that banks never lend depositors money? All bank loans are new money created out of nothing. It used to be at the stroke of a pen, but today it is nothing more than electronic blips in their computer system. Traitorous politicians have given the banks the power to create the nation's money, which they lend to you and they demand interest on it. That interest can never be repaid because it does not exist. The only way you can pay that interest is to get money off someone else who also got it from someone else, but it can ultimately be traced back to a bank loan, which is the only source of money today. Judges and lawyers deny your right to trial by jury, and that is how they prevent the evidence of fraud. They protect the banks who dispossess tens of thousands of families of their homes and property every year, and they are directly responsible for many suicides. It is modern-day slavery. Slavery has long been a sad part of man's history, yet in 1807 it was abolished through the dedicated efforts of one man, William Wilberforce. He had no internet, no CDs, no phones, none of the powerful means of communication you have today. He won the victory in the courts and in the parliament using the very same laws and rights you still have, and he won the battle against formidable and powerful enemies. How did he do it? As a genuine Christian, he had little interest in sanctimonious gatherings in pews of indifference behind closed doors. Like a true evangelist, he took the message out to the people, and he knew that a jury of twelve who genuinely prayed, so help me God, is the most powerful weapon against tyranny, fraud and corruption that you have. This is practical Christianity in action. Slavery has been around a long time. It was abolished by the power of God, not by a flash of lightning miracle, but through informed jurors. But did you know that juries also have the power to overrule and abolish bad laws? Yes, and that includes most of the rules found in an insidious document used by lawyers and judges today. It's called the Uniform Civil Procedures Rules. It is an illegal act passed by traitorous politicians without a referendum and ignored by apathetic churchmen. Most of it would be thrown out immediately if exposed to an informed jury. It was dreamed up by solicitors and judges for their own financial gain. They ignore me completely, and most of their 600 or so rules are in direct conflict with both my Section 109 and Section 15A of the Acts Interpretation Act, and yet they are continually changing their rules. That evil document is based on the lie that a single judge can make orders without your consent or without a jury, just like Big Bad John, King John. Section 109 When a law of a state is inconsistent with the law of the Commonwealth, the latter shall prevail, and the former shall to the extent of the inconsistency be invalid. Remember sections 79 and 80 regarding single judges and juries? Now do you understand why they're so afraid of me, and especially juries? Your slavery today is not with whips and chains. It is much more subtle. It has crept up on you, especially over the last 50 years. You say, slavery? What slavery? Then why are you going to pay over $1 million for your $300,000 home? Who gets the extra 700000 Why do you pay up to half your income in taxes? If you don't pay, they'll fine you or jail you. And you say you're not a slave? Please don't say that all your taxes are used to run the country. 
a major chunk of your tax tribute is to pay the interest on government debts to the bank. Did you know that in 1920, taxation was only 2.5%? You are slaves today to public debt, inflation, bankruptcies which can result in suicides and foreclosures on your homes and small businesses. How would you like to buy your $300,000 home under a proper money system? The $300,000 is made up of raw materials and human effort, nothing else. Under a proper system, your home loan is really credit granted to you for your future work and production, that is, your ability to repay. Regardless of who prints the money, tickets or electronic blips on a computer, be it government or even a bank operating legally, your new home represents an increase in the national wealth, namely one house. But there is one extra human effort to include, that is the bookkeeping for that new money. Suppose you make 300 payments, so someone has to do 300 bits of work. Allow them $50 per payment. That's a total of 300 by $50, or $15,000. So the total cost of your home should not be $1 more than $315,000. And that is the amount to be created. And you agree to repay it at $1,050 per month for 300 months, or 25 years. Listen carefully. Under that proper system, there would be zero inflation. But under the current interest system, you must repay over $1 million. That, my people, is the source of all inflation. And that is your slavery. You can defeat this modern slavery by firstly reclaiming the courts. They belong to you, my people. Read my chapter 3 for the administration of justice. Don't be deceived by judges and solicitors who will try and tell you that I am not valid today. The High Court says they're lying. When you play your part to make sure this CD is widely distributed, there will be vicious reaction when you start taking banks and solicitors to court in thousands of actions for their fraud. That is, variable interest and costs orders. You can go back six years. Now they'll argue that if every trial is going to be by a jury, then the courts would be jammed. Not so. Did you know that when a jury trial is actually granted these days, over 90% of cases are settled out of court before the jury trial? It is solicitors who encourage the ongoing court actions. They grow fat off their incestuous system. Now you know why they desperately protect each other against anyone exposing their crimes and fraud. It's been well known that for many years there's been much abuse of the law by judges and solicitors in the Federal Magistrates Court, and it was starting to be exposed. No wonder they were anxious to abolish that court on the 5th of April 2009. Their story was that it was uneconomic. Yeah, right. Nevertheless, you can expect a lot of lies and attacks against this CD from the media. They will lie, they will distort the facts, and they will rubbish any reform as printing press money, wild inflation or whatever. Of course notes and coins are made on printing presses. They don't grow on trees. Whatever they do, even threats of massive financial crisis, don't panic. It's not a problem, because under Section 51, your government can, in only a few weeks, restore your money system to represent the real wealth, your farms, your minerals, your homes, your transport systems, and much else. Generally, politicians are not held in the highest esteem, but they too have mortgages and children trying to buy a home or get a job. When they get to understand the solution and forget the party politics, they have access to honest experts who know how to fix the money system legally, morally and efficiently. Governments do not have to go cap in hand to banks for finance to build roads, hospitals or whatever. In Section 51, 4, 12 and 13, they already have the power to create real money with no interest for government projects. A new road costing $10 million is an increase in the real wealth of the nation. So governments have the right and duty to create that $10 million and distribute it debt-free to pay those who work to build the road exactly as the Nullarbor Railway was built. Imagine what just that step forward would do to reduce your rates and state taxes and stop the ridiculous and traitorous action of selling our state and national assets which belong to you. 
Remember, money is not a commodity. It's not wealth. It's a representation of the real wealth which is owned by you, my people, not the banks. Now you know why they're so afraid of juries and why they are the real force behind the push for a republic. So what can you do? When the Israelites were in slavery, Moses did more than pray about it. He confronted Pharaoh head on, and with persistence and divine help, the Israelites' slavery was ended. Note, God's miracles came after Moses took action. When Fred Hollows is presented with a blind person, he does more than just say, let's pray about it. He uses his God-given gift and operates to restore that person's sight. William Wilberforce did more than just give lectures on the evils of slavery in England. He, an honourable churchman, confronted the slave masters in the courts with juries. Proper courts with juries are the best defence of your freedom and rights. Not long ago, attempts were made to destroy your Australian flag, but the flag cried out to you. All across this great nation, more than a million people heard and still listen to the voice of the Australian flag via radio, TV, the internet, cassette and CD. Many heard for the first time what the design of their flag is really all about and what it stands for. Your flag, drenched with the blood of those who gave their lives for you and the freedom you have today. Many listeners wept at the thought of this wonderful part of our heritage being destroyed. It would be like abolishing Anzac. My people, you listened, you rallied, you would not let your flag be torn down or discarded, and today it is more loved and held in greater esteem and awareness than ever before. The voice of the Australian Flag CD was copied and distributed by tens of thousands of caring people, and they squashed much of the anti-flag movement. William Wilberforce defeated the slave masters in 1807. They can be defeated today, but they will not be defeated by academic lectures in meetings and certainly not by revolution and violence. They will be defeated in the courts with informed juries. At this very moment as you listen to me, hundreds of people are making ten copies each of this CD to give out freely. Give a copy of this CD personally to your local member of parliament as well as the pastor and elders in whatever you call your church. They probably have a mortgage too. Do not post it. They probably won't even see it. Find a way to put it personally into their hands and letterbox this CD in your street and theirs. Politicians will act only when they think they have voters supporting them. Remind your pastor and church elders, as William Wilberforce did, that they should not be hiding in their sanctimonious closet, desperately searching for any scripture to justify their non-involvement. Some of them probably live off interest too. They become so heavenly bound that they become no earthly good. The commandment, love thy neighbour, surely includes the responsibility of helping an oppressed neighbour, that's you, and in the public courts if need be especially in the family court where the legal vultures feast on the carcasses of troubled marriages. Marriage vows are treated as a joke, and the last thing they want is marriage reconciliation. Why? Solicitor's fees. But if church elders did their job properly, there would be no need for Christians to go to court. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 6. They may help prevent just one of the seven suicides each week which can be directly related to the family court actions. When you go to court, do not go alone. Take a group of friends to witness the proceedings. It is a public court. They have every right to be there. Preachers should know me and preach about me regularly. Why? Because I am your day-to-day -day practical application of Bible laws on how we should live. So ask your pastor to do a sermon on the Constitution and how the churches intend to have the illegal Uniform Civil Procedure Laws abolished. The High Court declared they are illegal in 1996. Where does your church leader stand on this most important issue of moral law? I was given as a free gift to you, my children, by a wise and patient ancestry. Now it is your turn to make copies of this CD as your gift to everyone you can, in your area, in shopping centres, everywhere. Because somewhere today, there is another William Wilberforce just waiting for you to give them a copy of this CD. 
Through me, your wise early fathers extended practical Christianity to everyone, rich and poor. Without me, you will surely become slaves to some kind of republican dictatorship under the international bankers. It will be worse than communist China or Russia was. No private property, no rights, no juries. Both the bankers and the judiciary want to become a republic more than anyone else. The judiciary wallow in their power. They fear and hate the rule of law and they protect the banks who grow rich off you. I have been set in place to protect you against them and anyone who attempts a legal power over you no matter where you live. I was born from God's holy word and wisdom that none can dispute. I am 135 wisely written instructions for the protection of your freedoms and rights. Know me well and teach your children. Cast me aside and they will never forgive you. I can guide you, advise you and protect you if you let me. But there is one thing I cannot do for you. I cannot multiply myself. For that I need you, lest you forget. Put this CD into your computer to read and print the documents.